Namaskar and welcome everybody to today's Gita Satsang. So let us start with our prayer and prarthana. By the Guru's grace and the will of Sri Krishna, we have all assembled for this Gita Satsang. May we have their guidance to be able to learn and adopt the things which will help us to grow spiritually. Let us chant the prayers. Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishna Yavasu Devaya Haraye Paramatmane Pranata Klesha Nashaya Govindaya Namo Namaha Namo Stute Vyasa Vishala Buddha Ullara Vindayata Patranetra Yenatvaya Bharata Taila Purnaha Prajva Lito Gnana Maya Pradipaha Rama Nujadaya Patram Gnana Vairagya Bhushanam Srimad Venkata Natharyam Vande Vedanta Deshikam Yonitya Machuta Padambuja Yukma Rukma Vyamo Hatas Taditarani Trinayamene Asmad Guru Bhagavatos Yadayaka Sindho Rama Anujas Yacharana Usharam Prapatye. So, in the previous uh, session, we had taken two or three shlokas, and in the third one, we had covered, we have actually taken this 27th shloka in the last satsang, but there are a lot of other more, uh, you know, detailed deep kind of learnings that we need to have from here. So that is the reason why we are continuing with this 27th shloka uh, today. So the shloka says, Tan samikshya sakaunte yaha sarvan bandhu navastitan kripaya paraya vishto vishidan midam abravit. So it says that Kunti Putra, the son of Kunti, that is Arjuna, he saw all these different uh, types of people. He saw all the different friends and relatives. And seeing them, what happened? Kripaya Paraya Vishto. He came, became overwhelmed with Kripa, with the sense of compassion. He felt bad for all of them. And with that, you know, sadness, with that sorrow, he spoke these words. So what words he spoke, we will come to in the next satsang. But for today, we need to understand something more about the... Uh, ideas which are conveyed through this shloka. Now here, uh, the word used that he is called as Kunti Putra and this son of Kunti, that son of Kunti. So who is, uh, what is the significance of that kind of a usage of this name or saying that that Kunti Putra, right? So we saw already last time that he is overtaken by sadness. Now, why this word Kunti Putra and why it is said that such a son of Kunti, right? So the one who, which son of Kunti, the one who gets filled with Karuna, Kripa and Daya, seeing all these people on the battlefield. Now in some places it is told that why this reference to Kunti is there? Because Kunti was also a soft-hearted person and she was very uh, compassionate and kind to everybody. So that is why by saying that, by calling Arjuna as Kunti Putra, they are trying to indicate that he is the, after all, the son of Kunti. So he has similar qualities. He has inherited those qualities from his mother. That could be one thing. Or it may also be that, see, this Kunti, whatever difficulties came in her life, and so many of them came to her, so much difficulty came to her, but she always faced them bravely because she was belonging to the clan of Kshatriyas. So as a Kshatriya, it was her duty to face everything courageously. So by calling Arjuna as Kunti Putra, maybe we are trying to, you know, indicate that like his mother is such a courageous and brave woman, Arjuna also is a very courageous person. So we could say either way why this word Kunti Putra is used. Further, but we need to understand and talk today about these qualities of Arjuna, of Karuna, of Kripa on others, on, of Daya on others. Now, before we discuss about those qualities of Arjuna, we need to understand how those qualities are 
completely present in the Lord Himself. Krishna Himself, Narayana Himself has all these qualities. He is called as Sarvagnya. He knows everything. He has complete knowledge about everything in His creation, isn't it? Now, He needs this knowledge. Don't we say that whatever karmas we do, we will experience either happiness or sorrow according to that. So whatever is happening in our life is because of our karmas. So how does that get allotted to us? To be able to do that, the Lord needs to have complete knowledge of everything that is going on in the universe. So that way we say that the Lord's jnana is incomparable with that of anybody else. Now does he have only jnana? No. When somebody is doing wrong, when there are uh, people who are going on the wrong path, who are doing wrong activities, people who are indulging in evil actions, then he needs Shakti also to be able to punish such persons. So the Lord is filled with a lot of power. He is all powerful. He is Sarva Shaktiman, isn't it? So he has Jnana, he has complete knowledge, he is the omniscient person who knows everything in this universe. And then he is all-powerful also. Omnipotent he is. So he has complete Sampurna Shakti. And if the Lord had to have only these two things, then it would have been very dangerous for us. Because he would have then seen all the wrongs that we are doing. He would have known all the evil things that we do. All the mistakes that we commit all the papa that we are doing, he would have seen all that. And with his capacity to punish, he would have just punished us and kept on punishing us for all the wrong things that we have done. But what is it that gives us hope? It is the Lord's quality of daya. It is the Lord's quality of karuna. So he has the ability, not only he knows everything and he is completely competent to destroy any negative things that we do but he is also filled with compassion for all of us because of that compassion we have hope we there is so much that we do wrong there is so many actions that we do which are against what the shastras have told and yet the lord keeps waiting patiently for all of us to turn to him and the slightest sign that anybody shows of turning towards god he will come running to our help and very happily, he will forgive <coughs> all the wrongs that we have done so that we get blessed. So that is the karuna of the Lord. I think in some previous satsangs also, we have talked about how there are two forms of the Lord that give us this reassurance. One is that of Lord Venkateshwara. His eyes are closed, isn't it? And what do those half-closed, you know, eyes indicate to us that the Lord has closed his eyes to our faults. The Lord has shut his eyes. He is not going to look at any of the papas that we are doing. That is the hope that we get from the murti of Vinkateshwara, from the form, from the rupa of Vinkateshwara. And then the other form of the Lord which gives us a lot of hope is that of Lord Jagannath of Puri. That Lord's eyes are very big. And it is said that the Lord's eyes are so big because he has opened his eyes wide. He should not miss the smallest act of goodness that we come, that we perform. So both these, the Lord is just waiting to see the smallest thing that we do right and bless us because of that. And at the same time, he has closed his eyes to our faults so that he does not have to punish us. So both these rupas, swarupas of the Lord, they are what give a lot of hope to us. So just like the Lord <coughs> has this quality of jnana and shakti and karuna, similarly this Arjuna also is having a similar combination. Now we know that Arjuna was such a great warrior. He did so, he had all the jnana, he had studied all the Vedas, he had studied everything in Dhanur Vidya, he had practiced so perfectly. So he was perfect in his knowledge. He was having unlimited energy also. He had fought against so many Rakshasas. 
in that previous during the agnyata vasa when the virata yuddha happened at that time also he had fought against everybody all these same kaurava warriors numerous times he has fought against so many different you know powerful beings and he has got also many astras and shastras from the deities so he is completely shaktiman and yet having the gnana and having the shakti did not make him proud of his abilities and that is the reason why here standing on the battlefield looking at the people on both sides he is overcome by this kind of a compassion so arjuna also had this quality of karuna now there are times when people back out from a fight or people uh, you know refuse to go ahead on some path of action because they are scared of the consequences that they think that what if i fail right but was arjuna's a situation like this no in fact one of the reasons why he felt so much karuna looking at everybody on both sides is that he knew that all these people are going to get killed in the war he knew his ability and he knew the ability of their army and he knew that unnecessarily so many people are going to be killed in this war that was his you know quality of daya on everybody now was it that so we cannot say that like other people who back out of a fight because they are scared of outcome arjuna was you know feeling pity on them and overcome by this feeling no arjuna knew very well that he will triumph he knew because of his own ability and he also knew because krishna was with him so he knew that they are going to win and yet he felt bad for everybody then there are times when you know people don't want to have a fight because they they are unsure of their own abilities was that the case with arjuna no he is completely capable he knows that very well so it is not that because of fear that will i be able to fight well will we be able to win that kind of fear was not there in his mind so what is it that moved him it was his superior quality of his sattva guna which made him feel bad for everybody so just like the lord has these qualities arjuna also showed these similar qualities the only difference is that the lord has gnana shakti and karuna and because of his karuna he protects his devotees and arjuna felt karuna but his state of mind was very much different because he is after all a jivatma like us he is not paramatma he may be a very superior kind of a jivatma but yet he is jivatma and that is why he gets into the stage of confusion about what he should do and he gets the feelings of you know doubt whether it is right what he is doing is it worth it is so much bloodshed and fighting is it worth whatever he is going to gain by this war those are the kind of questions that come to arjuna's mind so we must understand that these doubts these confusions which are coming to arjuna's mind are coming not because he is a weak person but he because he is a strong person who has complete awareness of his strength and ability and he has compassion for the other people that daya and karuna is what sets arjuna apart somebody who has lot of gnana and shakti and they have no karuna will be a very hard hearted person but this kind of an ardrata this kind of being wet with compassion is the quality which is typical of great souls in fact it is also the case with swami ramanujacharya he was born in the ardra nakshatra and ardra means somebody who is completely moistened by the feeling of compassion for their fellow beings and this we have seen numerous times in the life of ramanujacharya also so these are the points in the shloka now what we can learn from this this quality of daya that arjuna had right so having compassion on others who are these others it may be people around us it may be our relatives it may be our family members it may be our children our spouses sometimes it is natural for us to feel compassion to people close to us we must also feel compassion for those who are not directly related to us how much can i sense the suffering of other people that is a important quality which determines the greatness of a person so we say that somebody who is humble in spirit 
is actually great isn't it similarly also someone who feels pity for others someone who feels compassion for others such a person is actually the superior person now many times we think that bhakti means whatever is done directly in the worship of god whether it is namasmarana whether it is singing bhajan and kirtan whether it is offering puja to the lord you know making a garland of flowers and offering it to the lord singing the lord's glory hearing hari katha all these things we say that all these are a part of bhakti but in the real sense along with doing all these things we need to also have the spirit or develop the spirit that anything and everything in this universe which has been created by the god that holds a part of the lord in it so we should be able to see everyone around us all animals around us all beings around us with this same spirit and that is who a true bhakta is we must have heard that famous bhajan no which is uh, like it was made famous because mahatma gandhi used to sing it often or quote it often vaishnava janato tene kahiye je peed peed parai jane re so what it means who are the vaishnava vaishnava is somebody who is a worshipper of vishnu so who is this vaishnava who is this person who is qualified to be called as a vishnu bhakta this is a person who knows peed parai jane re the one who knows the dukha the peeda of other people so always in our life we notice that we have this attitude of para dukha sheetal other person's dukha para means other and the dukha of other people we are very sheetal towards that we are very cool towards that we are not touched by the dukha of other people but we must cultivate the spirit of para dukha dukhi that if somebody is in suffering if somebody is going through trouble then we must have the empathy towards them which means we also feel for them we feel bad about what they are going through and not only that we feel bad about it we also try and do something to help them overcome their sorrow so that is the kind of quality that we have to develop and when we do that when we develop that quality then that is a time when we will be really considered as vaishnavas we will be bhakta in the real sense uh, it is told that in the ramayana during the time of uh, you know discussion by everybody about whether like dasharatha wanted very much that rama should be made the uh, next king so he wanted to do uh, the coronation of rama at that time he called a sabha of all the people in his kingdom and asked for their opinion about what do you think that we should do patabhisheka of rama so at that time all the people told that you have been a good king but now your rule is enough we want now to have rama as our king and at that time they described that the quality of rama which makes us feel so close to him is that if there is anything good which happens in our family then rama is the one who is there first to be part of our joy and he is the one who feels very happy as if he is our own family member at the same time whenever there is any cause for dukha in our family something happens to put us into sorrow then he is the first person who is there to comfort us and to take part in our dukha so that quality is what we have to try and cultivate that we feel for the pain of others and we try to help in whatever possible way we can contribute to helping others overcome their dukkha now there is a story which is told of a person called govinda butter he was actually the cousin of ramanujacharya now while growing up they both studied under the same guru and then they were going on a pilgrimage and that guru did not like ramanuja so he hatched a plot to kill ramanuja at that time it was this govinda batta who was there who overheard that plan and he came and told ramanuja and made sure that he goes away safely back to kanchipuram this same uh, govinda batta later after many years one fine day when ramanuja is uh, you know walking by he sees that this govinda is uh, sitting with a snake in his hand 
and he's putting his hand into the snake's mouth and doing something there. So he is shocked and he asks Govinda, Oh Govinda, what are you doing? What is it that you are doing? So Govinda says, just wait a minute. I will come and talk to you. There is a thorn which has got stuck in the tongue of this snake. So I am removing it out. Now Ramanujacharya is moved by this kind of a quality of uh, Govinda. The other people who are there, they all, you know, reprimand Govinda. They will, they, uh, you know, tell him that, what is this? Why are you doing this? See that snake? It's a poisonous snake. Why should you put your hand into its mouth and remove the thorn? It is good, no? If that thorn is there and if it is suffering, then that snake will not bite other people and kill them with its poison. So why are you trying to help that snake? It is good if that snake is not having its ability to bite other people. At that time, this Govinda Bhatta, he tells them, he say, he asks a simple question. He says, is the poison, if, is the snake poisonous because it wants to be poisonous? Or is it like that because God has created it that way? Who gave poison to that snake? Isn't it God who created it to be poisonous like that? What is that poor animal's fault in having that quality? It has played no role in becoming poisonous. It, it has been created like that. And that is why I am feeling that I can't bear to see this snake suffering. After all, it is an amsha of God. After all, it is one of God's creations. How can I let it suffer? That is why I am trying to help the snake. So, go in the butter, put his hand into the mouth of the poisonous snake to remove the thorn which was stuck there out of his feeling of karuna for that snake. After removing that thorn, he let the snake go away. Then he went into the river and had his bath and came to purify himself. But see the compassion of great people. It is like this. He was not bothered in passing judgment on the snake. He was not bothered about thinking that, oh, after all, it's a snake. If it is poisonous, then what will happen to me? He was not bothered to think that, you know, let it suffer. But all he could see was that it was a be living being and it was suffering and that he should do whatever is in his power to help that snake to overcome that distress. So this kind of a bhava of karuna is what is expected out of a Vaishnava, out of a bhakta of the Lord. Even in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the fourth uh, skanda, the 31st chapter, 19th shloka, there is a very uh, good advice which is given. Like how one should, uh, what all we should do to be able to please the Lord. How can we get the Lord's grace? And in that, the first thing that is told is that we should have daya for all beings. Dayaya sarva bhuteshu santushtya yena kenava so by having daya, by showing mercy to all the living beings, by being satisfied somehow or the other, with whatever you have, you be satisfied. And control your indriyas from enjoying only enjoyment of senses. By doing these three things, one is able to, to please Lord Janardana very quickly. So in this three things that are told, the first thing that is mentioned is that we must have compassion for all living beings. So that kind of a compassionate spirit we have to try and cultivate. So how do we do that in our sadhana? The first thing is that we must try and be kind in our words. The next thing is to be kind in our thoughts. And of course, to be kind in our actions. Whichever of these, we need to evaluate for ourselves and see out of these three things, kaya, vacha, manasa, through my body, through my actions, am I being unkind to people? Through my words, am I being unkind to people? Through my actions, am I hurting other people? By trying to adopt kindness in all these three aspects, we can slowly move ahead to becoming more full of compassion. So many times we talk in an unfeeling manner. We will say things very rudely to somebody or we will lash out with our words and our words 
our tongue sometimes turns out to be the harshest weapon whatever um, just like you know if you send an arrow once the arrow is shot it will not come back similarly when we say harsh words to other people then whatever hurt we have caused to the other person you can never undo that damage we need to understand that we need to be kind in the way we talk to other people what is it that i am saying to somebody all our you know mm, unkind language comes because we see ourselves as being different from them but the acharyas tell that does if you have a wound on one hand let us say your uh, left hand is there is a cut or a wound does your right hand say that you know you are the left hand you take care of yourself no the right hand will pick up the cotton and clean the wound the right hand will bandage it and apply ointment and help similar why is it because everything after all is part of the same body so also all of us together are a part of the lord himself then how can we distinguish and say this is mine that is not mine this person is mine that person is not mine these kind of feelings show that we are still yet to you know get to the stage where we see everybody as one or we see that the whole world is my family that idea of vasudeva kutumbakam or to see that god is present in each and every one so we must try and cultivate the spirit and the easy way to start doing it is that examine our own actions examine our own thoughts examine our own words are we being kind to people around us sometimes we gossip about people behind their back is that required do we need to do that we should stop doing it many times we are directly when we talk to people also we are very rude to them and we feel justified in our anger we say they hurt us so we will hurt them back or we will say i am stressed so i am throwing the stress out on somebody else but we have to try and if we want to improve ourselves then we must go ahead by trying to examine our own actions and correcting whatever it is that we are doing wrong so when we do these things we will slowly develop this feeling of karuna and just because we are um being good to other people or being compassionate to others it does not mean that we are weak and out of fear we are being good to other people but it is out of the quality of having kripa on them it is out of the quality of seeing them as one among us that we will have to do this behavior so we must adopt this quality which is very important for us to get ahead on the sadhana mark if we are only going to keep doing whatever sadhana we know and we keep doing it and yet our heart is hard hearted if our heart is not melting in compassion for other people's troubles then there is no point we will never get to please the lord we have heard so many examples of so many bhaktas so many saints isn't it those stories which are told of how um the when when the saint i think it was kanakadasa i'm not sure uh, who there was a dog which came he was making rotis and there was a dog which came and picked up one roti and he ran behind that dog with the uh, cup of ghee in his hand saying that wait i will apply ghee so that you can eat all the people laughed at him saying what is this nonsense he is chasing the dog and he is talking to the dog but what was the spirit of the bhakta he said that i feel that this was lord hari himself who came in the form of that animal and he came to my home seeking food so i have to provide it that was the bhava so he was able to see the lord in every form in every living being so when we have that kind of a spirit now who was the beneficiary by that action was it the people who laughed at him and pointed fingers and made fun of him or was it the bhakta himself so that may happen sometimes we may notice that if we are being good to other people then there will be others who tell us that you should not be so good you should not be so nice right but if we have the quality of being unkind then we must cultivate this quality of being good to other people of course there is also the other side to it like we have talked before also about the story of that snake who stopped uh, biting and also stopped hissing and then the 
everybody else took advantage of it so always there is going to be a balance that we need to strike between these two attitudes but the idea is that if we are very arrogant in our manners if we are very proud and if we are always only considering our own benefit and we are self centered then that is a rajotamo guna and to increase our sattva guna we need to take into consideration the feelings of other people we need to act with kindness towards other people so that should be something that we should all aim for so the idea of telling all this is to show that arjuna he says out of compassion he is feeling bad for everybody there so it was not out of fear or it was not out of doubt about his own capabilities but out of compassion for the others so in the next satsang we will talk about what arjuna said what emotions he went through and what was the reasons he gave what were the reasons that he gave for having that particular state of mind and then we will see how lord krishna explains to him what his attitude actually should be so let us wait for next time's satsang for all that now let us offer krutagnatas let us offer gratitude at the lotus feet of shri krishna and guru for inspiring us to start and join this satsang and let us pray for their blessings and grace to always be on us namaskar and um, we will meet again next tuesday actually there was a suggestion from uh, bindu one of our satsang members she said that maybe we can have one session during the satsang one day when anybody can ask the questions that they have about whatever we covered so far whatever topics we have talked about so far so if because sometimes these satsangs we run out of time so we are not able to you know actually take the questions in detail so i agreed with her suggestion and i felt that yes it is good so what we can do is if whoever amongst the people who are listening to this satsang either you are attending it at the actual time or you are watching the youtube videos later whatever it may be if you have been listening to these uh, satsangs and being you know a part of it then uh, please if you have any doubts or questions you can send it to me on whatsapp so i will see whatever questions come and next week i will try to answer those questions in whatever you know with my uh, limited buddhi and my experience whatever i know whatever i have been blessed to understand by the lord we will try and answer those questions so you can either send it to me uh, by typing on whatsapp or you can send an email or if you are not able to actually type it or something you can call me and tell also or you can also record an audio message on whatsapp and send it to me so that you know you are uh, we can get the question and whatever is the answer now i am not such a great um, nyani that if you ask directly in the satsang you can ask no problem but at that point of time whatever spontaneous answer i give i'm sure it is going to be very much lacking in uh, complete details because when we are asked something suddenly we will not be able to <coughs> tell that point in a way so that everybody can understand and follow or you no know, i may not be able to remember at that time some examples or some story or some anecdote which is relevant to that so if you send the questions well in advance um, next week we will again have our satsang on tuesday only so unless of course if there is a change for any reason but you can send me the questions and i will try to answer those in the satsang if you uh, don't have any questions fine that's okay but if it is anything which is covered in our satsang so far <coughs> or it is some doubt about sadhana that you have which uh, you know you want to have some clarification about you are most welcome to send me the questions in any of these methods that i specified so we will take up those questions and try to answer i hope that will be useful to all of us so thank you everybody for attending the satsang um, i am sorry i could not take it yesterday because as i mentioned last week i had gone to the temple of my kuladevata which is called the chinna tirupati near selam and also i went to another temple in a place called namakkal which is about you know one and a half two hours from there uh, where there is lord narasimha and there is um, namagiri tayar so this namagiri devi she is the one who is 
reputed like i mean she is of course very powerful on her own <coughs> but many people know of her as the devi who inspired that mathematical genius called ramanujan so he used to say that he gets inspiration in solving his mathematical problems or in putting forth those theories through this namagiri devi so it was a very blessed uh, darshan we had a very good seva there everything went very nicely so um because of that i could not take the satsang yesterday i was so caught up in all that that i even forgot to send a message saying that there will be no satsang yesterday but i assumed that since i had already indicated last week itself that you would have thought that it is not going to be there so anyway next week we will try and have it on tuesday as usual in the meantime if you have whatever questions you have whatever doubts you have you can send them to me on whatsapp thank you so much and we will meet again next tuesday namaskar thank you everybody namaskar thank you thank you thank you namaste